Hello, welcome. Um, this is a video to explain some parts of the post lab that may not have been so clear before. Um, let's say, just for the sake of example, that you want to tune a PID controller to be the best. And not only the best, but you want a response to some differential equation, for example, maybe one that is modeling an RLC circuit where you control the voltage output of the capacitor, and you want that voltage of that capacitor to stay constant at some value, lowercase r. And you really want it to stay there forever. Well, have I got good news for you. There are methods in this world called PID controlling tuning parameters uh, that can help you do that. And this is what the post lab is about. Um, the two methods, I guess I would call them algorithms that we're talking about, are the cohen kuhn method and the Ziegler-Nichols method. So cohen kuhn and Ziegler-Nichols. And let's see what that's about. So the cohen kuhn method is a method that takes some some response from a circuit adds an arbitrary step input and records the the output like how, how much that output changes and and tunes based on that um so here's a really good infograph about that from the powerpoint hopefully that you have this one so let's say we have some some input you know maybe it's zero whatever and you pass that into some differential equation and the output is some steady state output hopefully hopefully it's steady state if, if you have some any sort of negative feedback loop you have, an, you have a steady state output. Let's say I took that input and I changed it by some arbitrary, arbitrary amount, A. Whatever my output swings to, and hopefully it takes a new steady state amount, B, that would be my output game. So I have some input game, step, and I have some output game. So let's let's code that. So this over here is, uh, oops, this over here on the right is just um, lab two code. It has the PID stuff, etc. And the only things I've changed are the constants up above, so R, C, L, and V naught, that's here. R, C, L, V, naught, and there's so R80, and the rest of the PID stuff is zero. So that's over here. So if all of this is zero, and I turn off the PID because this is zero, then let's see what that outputs. Not that. Not that either. Okay, something like this. So, you know, we give it zero zero input, our IM, which we could call this, our input current is zero, right? KP, KD, and KI, all zero. So we know that our steady state value initially is zero. Let's actually, let's make this a little longer. 20, now let's go 30. And we'll change this to 30 as well. We'll close that, boom. Okay, so this is 30. Steady state output zero. So let's change that. So I am, which is our input. Let's let's arbitrarily make that larger. And I'm going to do that at some time point. So let's say if time of I is less than 15, uh, I am is equal to zero. So until 15 seconds, I am will be zero. Else I am is equal to 80. Eh. Yeah, 80, whatever, end. Cool. Um, while we're here, let's just record that. I am. Um, and since I added that, this needs an initial condition. Oops, 80. Nope, zero. Cool. And then this function will output this. So later on, when I need this, I can do that, and I can also plot T input. Okay. Cool. So between 0 and 15 seconds, no input. Then I do a step input. Step input here. That would be A. So our A is from 0 to 80. So our difference A is 80. And we'll see how B responds. So I'll run that. Let's get a fresh figure. Wonderful. So here I turned it on at 15 seconds, our step input, and our graph responded in this way, right? And our new steady state value looks like is 80. So in this case, A is 80 and B is 80. So later on, you know, when you need to calculate K, you'll need this value K, probably 1, right? 80 divided by 80 is 1. Finding these step measurements here. So we need we need some times, right? So our next, our next job is, can we find these time values? Um, Hopefully you know how to do this, uh, but 
I, I could try to try to help you. I want for first for starters, our T naught is when our, our input starts. So here we made that at 15. You can put whatever you want, but you know I made it 15 here, so this should be 15. So we'll just say T naught is equal to 15. T2 is the 50% point. So in our case, it's when our output goes from 0 to 80, right? So in this case, it's when our voltage hits 40. So we store voltage in a vector called V right here. So how can we tell when V hits 40? Um, there are tons of ways to do this. I'm going to do one of the worst. I'm just going to say for I equals, how long is that vector? 1 to the length of V. Um, if V of I is less than 40, remember, remember me equals I. Else, actually, or else do nothing. So, end, end. So what this does is... If we look at our graph, and this is the voltage value, every time the voltage value is less than 40, we're going to record that value. So, you know, I is going to be continuously overwritten in this region, in this region, in this region, all the way to here. And as it gets overwritten, the last time it gets overwritten is exactly at this value, this index, where V is the last time V is less than 40. And then as soon as it passes 40, it no longer remembers I. So I will be the last index that V is less than 40. So if our voltage and our time are indexed in the same order, then I can say T2 is equal to uh, the time vector and this index that I just remembered. Remember me. Cool. Actually, we'll leave that unsuppressed. You know, uh, one one thing we could do is we could say this 80 is less is actually 80 times 0.5, and if I needed to find T3, I could kind of do the same thing there, and I could find T3. Cool. So let's say you know, for the sake of argument, you do that. Remember me too. You know, there's some other code here to find the 63.2% mark. Yeah. Cool. And then you know T3. So let's say for, for the sake of argument, you know T0, T2, and T3. Well, we go down a little bit, blah, blah, blah. We use this stuff. T1 is based on T2, T3, and some other constants. Tau is equal to blah. So let you know, you'd say T1 is equal to T2 minus the natural log. I can't type of that. Put that in parentheses. Divided by 1 minus the natural log of 2. Bam. And that would be T1. And then you could calculate tau and tau delay and k. You know, k is this 80 divided by 80, so this is 1. And r, t delay, sorry, tau delay over tau. And that would get you that. And then you could use this wonderful table, since we're using a PID controller, um, r, you know r, capital K, you know capital K, and uh, and that's it, that's all you need to know, and then, then and, and, and tau delay, and that will give you KP, KP divided by KI, and KD divided by KP. Just to note, you know, you actually want KI, and so you're going to have an equation that says KP divided by KI is equal to this, solve for KI, you're going to, you know, do some reciprocal stuff, multiply KP or divide by KP the other side, you know, easy stuff. Same thing here. Except this time you just multiply by KP to both sides. Cool. That's Cohen Kuhn. Um, I'll put the output of that, what that graph should look like at the end. Maybe. I haven't decided yet. But yeah, that's Cohen Kuhn. That's part one.